Welcome to We Fixed Real Estate. We got Renee, we got Fred. Okay, Renee with the traffic report. Yeah, uh, there's there's a good amount of traffic here uh, going from Vegas to Los Angeles. I assume they got rid of that problem on the road with the car, with the noxious fumes or whatever was going on there. Like a, the road was closed for like two days or three days. Going oh, really? east. Yeah, this was like a couple of weeks ago. Well, I'm glad you did not get stuck in that. Yeah, because you'd still be there. Uh, the reason I, I was late to this call is because... There was a, a, an agent that we worked with a long time ago. We were representing the buyer and he was representing the sellers. And he just asked me like, if we were still doing what we were doing and that he'd be interested in joining. So, and potentially joining. So people so, are kind of thinking. That's through. interesting. Drew, Drew and I are talking. It's like, we don't have anything really bright and new to talk about on the podcast, but you know, it, it's all crazy out there. Real estate agents are going to have to make a decision on what to do. From what I've been able to pick up, a lot of companies are trying to charge more for the listings now for some reason. I don't know why they're trying to justify that. Their um, buyer broker contracts are still going to try to get two and a half percent of the sale price. It's insanity. Uh, so when people look I mean, at that number, are going to laugh. But, I, I think yeah. it all just... I think it all just depends on every transaction. I think it's all about transparency. A person should have no problem to pay 3% if it's because they are, because the agent is fully managing the construction of the house, right? Yeah, exactly. Different than like when you're representing a buyer that comes to you, writes one offer, and then wants to get paid $50,000. I think that's where the problem is, right? So, and I was explaining that to the agent. Uh, that that called us. But there actually is a big topic that I did want to talk about just because I'm tired about talking about commissions. It's just what, whatever happens is going to happen and we should be focused on giving people um, our best uh, service. I've gotten a lot of calls from people who are thinking about buying and they already own a home, but they want to use their equity in their houses. And they're asking me how they can do that and if it makes sense for them to do that based on them having a mortgage uh, below uh, 3%. So I think, Fred, that could be a great thing that if you can kind of discuss. Swing loans. Would be. Yes, swing loans. No, 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 no. It's not swing loans. They want to continue owning that the property, right? Uh, but just well, buy an investment property with direct risk. Yep. So that's what we well, talk about. You could get what's called a cross-collateralized loan, but it's ridiculously expensive. So here's what you have to do. You probably have to, if you want to use the equity in the property and don't want to reach an answer three point something mortgage, there are second mortgages that you can get on the property and they're two different types. One's a loan. Um, probably the rates are in the sevens and eights and nines, depends on loan to value and credit score, but maybe it's only a 15 year term. So the payment might be higher. There's a million different ways to do those loans. So you just have to look at what's available and what the payments are. But separately, there you can get a line of credit. Mm-hmm. And the way the line of credit works, it's like a credit card. You use it, you pay it up, you pay it down, you pay interest only for the first 10 years. And after the first 10 years, they usually convert then to a 20-year fixed mortgage for the balance. Or you can refinance it into a new loan. And it's interest only, so the payment's lower, but you have to qualify based on normally the qualifying rate that the lenders have, which is usually the current rate plus 2% or it's a, it's a million different ways, but that's the way to get the money out. There are also these lenders who are now doing, uh, kind of mirroring what the v, the FHA has done called uh, uh, the kind of loan where you don't make a payment. It's, it's just, they're gonna lend you your equity, but they're gonna go in partnership with you. So when you sell the house or within a certain period of time, you have to pay them off at a predetermined number, but you're giving up a lot with these types of mortgages. They're even on the radio now with simple people saying, oh, I got this new program where I took (laughs) equity out of my house and I don't have a monthly payment. Well, guys, you're going to pay at some point. So also... But the other good news is you can do a Fannie Mae loan, which in LA, San Francisco, the Bay Area, 
you can get a loan up to $1,149,825 with as little as 5% down for investment properties. Now, the PMI is going to be really expensive, uh, but it can be done. So everybody's got to look at their own situation and see what the story is with their finances and talk to a mortgage person. Oh, wait, we do mortgages. Yeah. Set a time to contact us and we'll talk about your situation in detail and figure out what's going to work. But there are ways. There are ways. That's for sure. I'll take your work, Brad. There you go. And the other thing, if you do need to sell the house, there are swing loans and we can go into details of what that is. But basically there's a lender who's going to lend you based on the equity in the house you have and the house you want to buy based on how much down payment you're going to put. So sometimes you can even do 100% finance. Collateralized mortgages. Um, so the whole point is this allows you to kind of expand your real estate portfolio with the equity in your house that you already have. Pretty much. Pretty much. You can do it. Hey, Drew, while we were talking real estate, a- anything new on the houses in your neighborhood? Remember you know, all it's, 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 gotten even, it's gotten even weirder. I think a bunch of people all moved onto my street. The houses were all built in 65, and I think they never moved. Because yesterday I was driving to the store, three houses, one right after the other, had junk removal services, just gutting the inside of the house, like three hoarders. Or, or could this be part of um, one of the big companies like BlackRock, who's selling off a lot of property? Maybe they own them all and they're selling them all. We don't know. These are like three bedroom, two, three bedroom, house, three bedroom houses that never got updated. So the one sold just down the road for me um, right. for a million. Now the house right next to it is for sale and getting gutted. And then three houses down, getting gutted. And by saying gutted, they're just hauling all the crap out of it. Yeah. Seen- like like kitchens and bathrooms or just no, like boxes wheelchairs and, and boxes and you know, old water heaters and stuff that people stored broken down stuff like hoarders i'm sure i'm sure stuff's coming on the market it's up so. to seven there's seven now that i've identified that are vacant wow or being gutted and this one that i just saw on zillow it's um the one that was really had the junk removal service their property the, the property is still valued at um forty eight thousand <laughs> for the tax great out great algorithm guys yeah well no not though the the property is valued for a million but the tax history shows the oh yeah 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 at forty eight thousand, which means that's probably the and it went up two percent a year, so that that's got to be original. Yeah, list. yeah, totally. The city is thrilled to get rid of them because they changed it to one point two five percent of the sale price. It's a lot more money. Yeah, so. it's, at the price point, it's not very good for flippers, but we'll see. Or see, yeah, investors. We don't see. like flippers. We don't like investors. Either buy and flip charge too much and there's there's not a lot of margin in these either it's, i mean you really got to steal it it's really hard our um i've got a friend that lives in texas and he's on his way to alabama and he's been flipping homes in alabama because he can buy them for eighty nine thousand on the street and sell them for one hundred forty five thousand, and put but you 10 15 in yeah there's a little it, yeah. the, the metrics work a lot better in the hundred thousand dollar home than the million dollar home. Oh, without a doubt. And the people are a little more desperate to get rid of them usually in the lower number. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tougher. Home, you put in just almost builder grade countertops and it it's considered a big upscale uh, improvement. Yep. Just put in your new manufactured flooring compared to the fifty year old carpet and you're good to go. Sounds like a plan. Well, it won't fly in California, I don't think though. No. no, there are places, there's a bunch of TikTokers who will, they go through the stats and they tell you, hey, in this city, it's going down. You know, it's just, it's all case to case, but, you know, there are some places that's slowing down. It's the middle of the summer. No, nobody's going to go, let alone buy anything in like the desert. Mm-hmm. It's really slow there. But, I wow. Yeah. And it's kind of slow for us because it, it's, it's, it's August. It's just summer, but rates are coming down. And remember, five million people. 
Yeah, 5 million more people have qualified for a mortgage based on every half a percent in interest rate dropping nationwide. Um, yeah. You know, then you got to have the money and the motivation too. But we'll see probably if rates come down, we'll get more buyers, but we'll also get a little more inventory because allegedly economies, the reason they drop rates is so they can stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. So when you stimulate an economy, that means there's something wrong with it. And that means usually unemployment slows down, uh, but who knows, who knows? And the problem is like the people who thought about retiring to Florida and now it's like, well, I probably don't want to do that. The insurance prices are insane. If you can get it, the hurricanes have been hitting all kind of global warming situations down there. Condos, as we talked about a million times are having issues. So that might slow it down in Florida and not speed things up to market in, I don't know, Wisconsin or Ohio where people are going to sell and move. So there, there's, there's a million little factors going into every piece of real estate. Oh, That's yeah. what it amounts to. So, what, so what if I, like, look, I, I had a friend over the other day and he, they're younger and they were, they've been looking for a home for the last couple months and they, they just decided to take a few week, weeks off. Because it's slow, but is that, that to me that didn't seem like good advice? We should just see if something new is coming to market. It's you're you're either in the market or you're not in the market. So if you're in the market, your little red fan alert, Zillow alert is going to pop up. You got to keep that going. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it problem is people make this like a thing. They go out to brunch and they figure, okay, we'll hit these five open houses. You know, maybe they're interested in one, but they want to see everything. Just mm -hmm. focus on what you really, really, really want. And if something pops up, go see it. Because depending on the area, it might be off the market in three days. Mm -hmm. Just never know. So keep your pre-approvals, your fully underwritten pre-approvals alive. Make sure you check them alive. How long do, does a fully underwritten pre-approval last? 90 days from the day that the credit report is, is run. They got to run another credit report. Okay. So it's, it's you know, a little, it's a bigger 60 to 75 days, your approval is good for. But check with your lender and then set yourself a calendar alert to know to go back, give them a new pay stub, a new bank statement, and they rerun the credit. And you know what? It's only three points on the credit. So if you have 790 scores, it's not going to make a difference. And that goes to 787 or if even 784. If you're 801, you may want to think about it. Oh, if you're into the prestige of the 800 club or something, but it doesn't mean anything. No. It's like the value of your property doesn't mean anything except the day you buy it, the day you need to refi for an appraisal, and the day you sell it. Other than that, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Save talk your about, credit scores. Talk about interest rates. We see them starting to drop, and there's looking out in the horizon, it looks like they might be dropping even further. If you're looking for a pre written pre approval of a credit, would you lock in a credit score for a better offer? Or what's the, you how would you lock it up? Lock in a credit score or no, lock in an interest rate? Interest, interest lock rate. Lock in interest rate. You can't lock in before you find a house normally. There are programs where you can lock for 60 or 90 days in advance, but you're going to be like a quarter percent higher than what the market rates are. And if and rates are trickling down, you don't need to do one of these yeah. things. So the, the environment switched there, whereas like maybe last year where the rates just kept settling and rising, you might want to lock it in. Yeah, you just want to lock in and get it done. Go to your comfortable number and don't look at the rate, look at the monthly payment because you're not going to write a check for six and a half percent. Yeah. So I, this was yesterday. Uh, we had a buyer like nine, no, a million something, a million oh fifty or something with a 780 mortgage, some, some ballpark like that. But we were quoting them six and an eight with even money back towards closing costs. Wow. And 6% with only a few hundred bucks to get 6%. So we'll be in the fives. You can be in the fives of points if you want now. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's, that's come down. Considerably. Yeah. I, I had no idea they dropped that far. Yeah. And, and again, it all depends on credit score, loan to value, type of property that you're buying, number of days of locking in. There's a million different factors going to rates. So if you go to Ariva.mortgage, click on rates. You'll, you can put your scenario in and get live rates so you get an idea. Yeah. So as far as refinancing, someone that bought a home last year, a year and a half ago, at 777 or so. Two and a half, yeah. Exactly. 
Is there a magic number on the interest rate when it makes sense to refi? Look at the dollars, the dollar saving. If you if you can, let's say, save a hundred bucks and it doesn't cost you a thing to do it because it's a no cost refi, do it. Okay. Can't hurt. You know, unless you want to wait. It's never a, so it's it's never a no bucks. cost refi. The amount of time it takes to gather all the documents. <laughs> It's not too bad. Wow. It's, it's all electronic. And with us, we, our system's all, you know, just upload your pay stubs and W-2s. I mean, your accountant sends you W-2s, your employer sends you the pay stubs, your banks electronically send you the, the bank statement. So that's pretty much all you need and a federal ID. So it's not bad. Unless you have multiple companies and you need P&Ls, I mean, blah, 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 blah. it can get crazy. But RSUs, that's one of our bugaboos. Fannie and Freddie say three years they want to see of history. So if it's not Fannie, there's other lenders that can do it. Uh, but you want the best rates, you got to follow the toughest guidelines. So, sure. What's an RSU? Restricted stock unit. Oh, yeah. It's the stock options but that they give you as part of your compensation instead of oh, paying the cash. So the people who three years ago got their NVIDIA RSUs, they're doing good. <laughs> or the people buying the houses. Ago that got their Intel RSUs aren't doing so good. Not Intel, doing so well. Same price it was in 1998. That splits? Oh. It didn't split. I mean, it. Um, yeah, I was, I was shocked. I was shocked at that. It was, tw- I could go back on the all time chart. Yeah. It peaked like in 19- March of 1998 at $22. And now it's $22. Yeah. Yes, there's dividends, but you're not really, I don't think you kept. Intel from 1998 to 2024 for the dividend. Yeah, I don't think anybody's kept it that long. There's long-term investors. But that's a little ridiculous. I'm I, sure you. I feel bad for things. Intel stock options. Like it's not, you spend yeah, there's it's all kinds of way to make money going up and going down. So, mm-hmm. well, good that's, luck to you. Yeah, I was, I was shocked at that. In the same time frame. Um, Advanced micro devices in 2005, 2012, I believe was two dollars this year. Now it's 150. How how did Intel just? That's a whole different podcast. That's a completely different podcast. Yeah, exactly. that's the we fix tech industry. That will be coming out next week. We're doing this is real estate, but just shows totally you you got to adapt. Yep, context, baby, context. Yeah, speaking of context, where's your coconut water? I'm out of it. I'm oh. waiting for more. So, sorry, guys. You didn't send me any. I'm out of it. Drinking too much. That's funny. It's nice. It's got electrolytes in it, too. It's another good thing. Uh, yeah. Did you ever see that movie, Idiocracy? Yeah. And Crocs, they made fun of Crocs in it. Now Crocs are the biggest thing. It's pretty funny. The, the amount of things in that movie that has come true. Mike Judge, it's, he's just out now, brilliant. So, <laughs> <She's terrible. laughs> idiocracy, great movie. Go see that. Well, let's see. I think we've put a put, put a bookend on this. We fixed real estate. Unless you got something. Yeah, about. it's it's August. And it's boring. It's just everybody's quiet. Enjoy the whatever the Olympics and surfing was awesome. Oh yeah, did you watch any of that? Oh yeah, I caught the surfing. That was good. First round when it, or the second round when I was like 15 feet was amazing. <laughs> and then I re- loved that Kali Vast, who's a Tahiti local, won the gold. Oh, yeah. He was great. I mean, it's, it's hometown court. You know, he knows every piece of water in there. Yeah. I watched him for in all the pro surfing contests. He he's always makes a good appearance there. Yeah. John John blew it. I mean, he just wouldn't take a wave. And I was... Like, dude. I was kind of surprised by our local girl, Katie Simmers. She's from Oceanside. I, oh. I surf. I've seen her surfing out there since she was about three. Always ripped. She was there and um, did really well in round one, but yeah, round two. She, she then she missed round two with all the good waves, and then was forced to surf round three. And it was just like complete mushy slop. And oh, it, that's horrible. It, it, yeah. So she did not, but she had a good attempt and. She's got a long career. She'll she'll be in the next one. Well, what we get out of this Olympics is one picture. Too bad he didn't win. It's like, dude, really? That wave, you didn't win. Yeah, Medina. Where he came out and it's just like he's posed there. 
He, he does 10 and then he goes one. Yeah. The funny thing is, that if was... you watch all his contests, that's his maneuver. He, he, uh, it, this is the first time it got captured in that angle. Yeah, it was just an amazing picture. He has hey, been practicing that kick out maneuver for years. I mean, but this is not we fixed sport. surfing. This is we fixed real estate. Well, we, we could, we could <laughs> there it's a cut, cut and edit. We could do we fix shirking. <laughs> dude. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the word dude in there, though. Did you make it out lately? No. Nah. No. Nah. Uh, I was just down at the beach, Marina wow. Del Rey, but now there's no surfing there. Is the water? It's, water? That's like a sneaky dog. By the way, real estate hit. I have a dog in Marina Del Rey. Go all the way down to the end where that long walkway is. There's the beach there. It's kind of rocky at the end. But dogs are there all the time. Nobody, really? nobody cares. Yeah. Ah, so it's nice to have a, yeah, it's like a, a private dog beach that nobody really cares. Hmm. Yeah. Good tip. All right. That's enough. We, <laughs> this is boring, boring everybody now. No, they're, they're probably now just tuning in. This is fantastic. Dude. Well, Renee, Renee, let's just get the weather report. I was in Vegas for a uh, conference. Oh. Of the week. How was the weather in Vegas? You know, 114 degrees. It's like 71 here, probably. In Marina Del Rey. Anyway, enjoy the summer, the warmth. See you on the next one. See you on the next one.